Guten Morgen Europa, good morning Europe, buongiorno Europa, uh, benvenuti cittadini del mondo. I must say it's always a pleasure to start something in Italian because this is the language that gives me the most European feeling of all, um, of United Universities of Europe, and we are trying to explore what's going on in European universities who have joined uh, into greater units, into alliances, and um, one way to find out how they are, how they're working, is to look at the people who work there, is um, to see how they are working there. And for that, we have invited um, a number of um, guests today. Uh, some of them are uh, policy officers and coordinators uh, into, uh, into um, in these alliances, such as... Um, um, we start with Magdalena Sikorska from um, Oinice Alliance um, in Poznan, which is Poznan is the university leading this, um, this alliance. We will speak afterwards with Thibaut Schrippek um, from Ecole des Ponts Paris Tech, which is a, a work package leader of ELISA, another alliance. Then we are um, um, meeting Katrin Bergen who is a local ARCUS um, Alliance coordinator there. And then we'll uh, meet Nadine Schovakar from Potsdam, not far from here, from Berlin, who is uh, the project, man a project manager of EDUC, European Digital University uh, um, from Potsdam. This will be the first half of our, of our panel discussion, where we find out what these coordinators are actually doing. Then we'll have a little break, and after the break we um, continue to go deeper into the topic and talk with Eva Maria Feichtner. She's the vice president of the University of, um, of Bremen. And, and after that we uh, meet uh, Jörg Niehoff, um, policy coordinator for university business cooperation in the European Commission. So this is the program overall. And um, I would like to start right away with our first guest, uh, who is um <coughs> Magda Sikorska. Hello, Magda. Hello, everyone. Good morning. <laughs> Good morning. Good morning. So you're, so uh, you're um, speaking, uh, from, speaking Potsdam, from Potsdam. Potsdam, Potsdam is, is, the, is the leading institution of the Oinice, uh, Oinice um, Alliance, right? Right. Actually, we pronounce it UNIS, um, or you can pronounce it UNIS, or however you want to, but this stands for European University for uh, Customized Education. Uh, and actually, our um, I represent Poznan University of Technology, and we are actually the only Polish university that is the leader of its consortium. Um, so definitely, this is uh, this is uh, a great privilege, but also it en uh, entails a lot of challenges uh, for us. Um, um, uh, it's is true. It, is it true that the Polish that, uh, government Pol also has given a special support, also financial support, to the universities, um, Polish universities in the university alliances? Yes, that's true. We are uh, supported by our, by our government. Uh, altogether, there are 11 Polish universities that are a part of the alliances among the, the first call of 2019 and 2020. Uh, so we are supported financially by our, by our government. So, um, so um, I understand, I Magdalena, that, that, um, you that you are um, the, the project, officer, project officer, project officer of um, of UNIS, the alliance. Um, in what consists your work actually, and uh, or your the cooperation with your colleagues in Poznan for the alliance? Yes, so actually, uh, the structure of uh, the the core people who are the um, uh, creating the team uh, of, of UNIS at our university is on the strategic le level. We have uh, our vice president for international uh, cooperation, Professor Pavel Śniatała, who is the UNIS coordinator. And we have created within our uh, university structure a completely new unit that is um, basically um, dealing with the, with the alliance and is dedicated for the European University. 
And at this point, there are two people working uh, in this unit. It will be, it's my colleague, uh, Anna Bashinska, who is their uh, communication officer for the Alliance and myself, uh, I am working as a project officer. So we are both working on this um, operational level um, of, of, the, of, the, of the Alliance. But of course, this is just the core and uh, without uh, getting uh, different people from uh, different different faculty members, uh, administrative workers on board, uh, you wouldn't be able to to implement uh, the project. So that's very important to work uh, and uh, invite over people from different um, different units, different departments from the university. And also important aspect is the financial department because we as a as a leader, we are responsible for um, distributing money, for monitoring progress, for reports, also financial reports. So this financial aspect is also very important. So the team working and cooperation, this is what is important uh, in, in, in implementing uh, such a project at the university. Well, if, if, well, uh, if, if I'm not working, uh, I'm not working inside, inside. So if I'm trying to imagine what you're doing, so um, is it uh, the main part is communication and project planning, or how can I understand this? We are actually starting. We have just started. We had a kickoff meeting a few days ago from the with the European uh, Commission. So we just started the project uh, on November the first. So we are at this organize organizational stage of of our alliance at this point. Uh, so um, we actually are, are getting now and building the teams uh, from faculty uh, members from different disciplines so that they are helping us with, the, with the implementing the project with working on different uh, work packages, working on deliverables. Uh, but uh, myself, uh, you know, I'm um, more of the working on this administrative level. So uh, cooperating with uh, all our partners from Spain, France, uh, Belgium, uh, Italy, uh, Finland, um, uh, and then um, Germany. Uh, so uh, it's important uh, to, uh, to communicate with everybody uh, internally, but also externally. Uh, we have already created our website and we have uh, many stakeholders contacting us and uh, you need to have a, a find a good way to communicate and disseminate information about your alliance outside of it. Uh, would you say that you have noticed a different working style of your colleagues in the other countries and other universities? Like in another way, they approach the problems than you do as the Northern Europeans? Uh, to some extent, yes. You know, as um, our alliance is very, um, you know, it's widely distributed uh, among Europe. So we have people coming from North, um, Western part, uh, uh, you know, uh, so there are uh, different characters, uh, different uh, pace of work. Uh, different approaches. Uh, you know, the issue is also, you know, different academic calendars because, uh, uh, you know, for instance, uh, during the summertime, some of the universities uh, closed uh, and we had to work on some, uh, some important issues uh, that the commission uh, required from us. But some say, oh, sorry, we are closed. Yeah. Um, so that's, uh, you know, there were some, some issues with that. Uh, but we as the leaders uh, have to deal with the situations and have to somehow cope with, with that. So, yeah. Um, um, is it true that there was a recently um, um, a reunion of the Polish rectors so that the Polish universities have also gathered, right? Mm, uh, you know, um, it's, it's good that uh, we have uh, some of the universities that have been joining the alliances a year ago because they have a great experience already uh, with working uh, within their alliances for a year. So um, that's a huge help for us because we are actually just starting and having organized ourselves uh, at this point. Uh, so it's really important like to organize this kind of conferences uh, internally within your country so that you can exchange the ideas and learn the best practices uh, from one another. Okay, Magda, last question for now. What would you think is the, is the most exciting or the most interesting new task that you have taken over now that you're doing this, this job as a new NIS project officer? 
one of which of these tasks that you have is, is, is the most challenging, most difficult, most interesting? I guess there are many of them. Um, I would say that uh, the team working thing is very important. Uh, solving problems, work management, uh, these are all important aspects of, of your work because you need to deal uh, with different challenges. Like, for instance, we work on this cloud and then everybody works there. And for instance, one day you deal with an issue uh, that somebody has forgotten its password and cannot access it. But on the other day, you might be dealing with an issue of a, uh, of a failure in a backup. And that's a, that's a bigger uh, issue. So that involves some kind of risk management and, and so on. But then I think that the, uh, at the end of the day, the, the added value of, of working within the Alliance is uh, the work uh, at the uh, international environment. And that's something that I really value in my work. Also, I think it's important when you uh, speak different languages uh, because multilingualism, we stress the importance of it in our alliance. Uh, so it can be uh, valuable when you uh, are able to, uh, to understand some documents and texts uh, in the other languages when you work with the, your partners from abroad. But we also stress in our alliance that this multilingualism is an important uh, feature of our future um, UNIS graduates, uh, because we believe this uh, uh, knowing other languages will make you uh, a better and uh, will be uh, better for you in the, uh, when um, you, you apply for a job. So it would increase your employability being a graduate of, of such an alliance. Well, Magda, grazie per questa bellissima contribuzione. I want to thank you for this uh, precious contribution. Um, why don't we switch now uh, to our second guest? Thank you, Magda. Katrin, now we're going in the far into the far north of, of Europe um, to Bergen, um, where um, Katrin is uh, the Arcus coordinator. Arcus is an alliance that is already active over a year. And, and you are with the Alliance um, nearly a year, like 10 months, right, Katrin? I started at the University of Bergen in Norway to take uh, on this task of uh, uh, coordinating and leading our activities at the University uh, of Bergen linked to the Arcus Alliance. Um, Katrin, um, you have been already working um, um, with interna the international environment before. Uh, can you say how, what you did before and how you got into this? Um, prior to starting at the University of Bergen, I, I uh, worked for the Norwegian National Agency uh, where I coordinated Erasmus Plus for Higher Education in Norway. Um, and prior to that, I always uh, all also worked for six years in Brussels, uh, dealing with policy issues, but more in uh, the business and trade area. So for me personally, uh, getting to know the university and the partners has been an important task uh, this uh, first year, and I'm still sort of getting to know uh, the institutions. You told me about two very interesting things, um, challenges that you had when you started this new job. This was the work, which is internationally, and across disciplines and across departments, so that, that you had like all, all across all boundaries. Um, um, could you ex explain a little bit what you're doing actually? I think this um, is an opportunity in the Alliance that we, we get to, to work um, both international, of course, and, and across different structures within the um, university and I think nothing of these it's not new in itself but the scope and extent of these activities are very new and the ambition of the Arcus Alliance uh, challenges how we work so organization wise I think it's extremely interesting and it encourages new ways of cooperating internally at our institution as well as with our partners uh, so uh, just to say that I think everyone, so the thought of this, of getting to know the differences and similarity between partners, but what has been a bit surprising to me was also the extent of 
uh, working with local structures and anchoring the alliance activities within our institution. Um, and we have now set up an internal structure to support efficient decision making and management in a matrix organization. And the work is so extensive involving more than 50 staff. So it's important to ensure a coordinated approach. And we have among other things set up a coordination group. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, um, one thing is also very um, interesting that um, Arcus, the Alliance Arcus has pledged to reach out to society, no? that is to connect with, with, the, with the, how um, uh, Vanessa de Biesson-Tom put it, the innovative ecosystem. Um, what does it mean in practical terms? How do you connect? What difficulties do you have? Of course, uh, the pandemic <laughs> situation hasn't helped, but we, we have planned to develop a regional socioeconomic network in one of our action lines. And I think this could be an important resource both in our work in innovation and in entrepreneurship. Uh, quality in education, of course, to strengthen the relevance of our education and uh, for our challenge-based program, uh, to name some examples. And uh, we have been in dialogue with potential partners, but uh, um, it's a challenging period to develop new partnerships. But I think this comprehensive approach it can be beneficial to, to have also a more coordinated approach towards external stakeholders. Um, and I think linking ARCUS to other initiatives at our institution, at local, regional, national, and European levels uh, is key. So um, the last question, adding to this, so um, do, would you agree that, that being confined to the online and the digital communication um, is also an opportunity to think more about the communicative structures and to prepare? Yeah, I think that has been very important uh, now that uh, one of the few benefits of the situation is actually that we have been able to reflect a bit internally on how we work. And I think also it has, um, made us be more innovative in working in different ways and new ways that we also can uh, uh, continue to do after this uh, crisis. And, and I think we will come out stronger. Yeah. For instance, uh, the University of Bergen is leading a challenge-based uh, education program. And the idea was to have a physical uh, winter school, bringing students together. Instead, we had to reflect on how to do this in a, a way that will be more a blended format. So we will not travel and meet, but hopefully students at different institutions will be able to meet and, and we will still interact. So we have been able to sort of innov innovate the way we do it and ensuring that while it out will not be the same it will hopefully be of the same quality even though uh, uh, we can't meet physically so, so I think it has allowed us to think in different ways how we work yeah. oh Katrina thank you so far um, in fact I also um, found that that um, uh, thinking and developing uh, teaching teaching ways of teaching using also the digital means has been very helpful through this period I would like now to speak, um, I would like to invite Thibaut in our round uh, to join. Um, his alliance is named ELISA, which is concentrated on uh, engineering schools. And uh, Thibaut, is it true that, that uh, the Col des Ponts is the oldest engineering school in France? And Star, which is located in Paris also, so created uh, mid 18th century, 1747 for the Ecole des Ponts. So the king by this time was not uh, Emmanuel Macron, but was Louis XV. <laughs> <laughs> Emmanuel Macron was in your building late, uh, lately, no? If I remember well. Did you, did you meet him? <laughs> well, last week he, he, gave, he did an, an interview uh, and, the, and the media offices are located in my building. So uh, when I went to uh, the, 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 the bin local, I saw plenty of police officers and security agents. So I, Okay, please don't shoot. I will put the paper in the right bin. Don't shoot. 
No, I must say, no, I must that, say um, that Emmanuel um, Macron, Emmanuel Macron whatever, his whatever his politics are, politi uh, gave an European input to this European Universities Alliance's initiative. And um, this, is a, this is a, has been a good start in 2017, and now uh, f um, nearly 300 universities are organized in these uh, 41 uh, university alliances, and um, the Ecole des Ponts is one of them. Um, Thibault, um, how has your professional practice changed from, um, from bilateral to multilateral since you are um, working for El uh, ELISA? Uh, well, yeah, my regular job, my usual, usual practice is just bilateral or mainly bilateral. So it means only one border cross in terms of, uh, whether in terms of culture, of working methods or local regulation. So with those multilateral projects like uh, the European universities, a lot of borders to cross. This is multidimensional and it brings uh, elements of complexity, of course, and it makes things a little bit spicier. And uh, uh, can you give a practical example? Well, the ELISA Alliance, uh, which stands for the European Engineering, Learning, Innovation, and Science Alliance is uh, mainly focused on uh, build a European engineer and uh, the way to practice the profession of engineer, the way to act, to the way uh, how the accreditation agencies control the education and the diplomas uh, are different from uh, one country to another. So uh, we must take care and look closely to uh, those differences in order to uh, target what is the aim of our alliance is to uh, design uh, an integrated European engineer degree. Um, is your uh, work package concentrated especially on this? So the, the Ecole des Ponts is uh, a member of the ELISA alliance. The ELISA alliance is coordinated by the Universidad Politecnica de Madrid. And my institution is in charge of the work package dedicated to uh, accreditation and uh, education management. So it, it means that uh, we therefore will analyze differences between the curricula, the requirement, requirements, and uh, we will strengthen our common approaches and create new ones. We will design a credential diploma supplement as intermediate steps in order to target the ELISA degree. And of course, we will have exchanges with uh, our national authorities. Uh, for instance, I have this afternoon a meeting with uh, the French uh, National Accreditation Agency, the Commission des Titres d'Ingénieurs. So the aim is to contribute to the re removal of barriers for the practice of engineering in Europe. But I think also it, the objective is uh, to strengthen attractiveness of the European educated engineer around the world. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Well, wouldn't it, well, wouldn't it be easier be... just to, uh, to take the German engineering diploma and to adopt, uh, and to, to, uh, adopt it in every country? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know if it will be easy. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, I, probably three years will, will be uh, really short in order to, uh, to, to reach uh, this goal. So your, your task is on one hand to look at how the engineering, um, uh, how engineering is taught in the different uh, members of the alliance and also how the different legal um, systems are to create a diploma or how is, what is your work consisting of in detail? Uh, I think there the are those two approaches, uh, an approach from uh, the institution of higher education so look closely to the requirements, to the courses, to the credits, to the internships. So really the design of the curricula, but we will have also this look from the uh, local authorities and uh, the, the professional organization uh, in, also in terms of practices, of, of practice, of titles. Uh, and I think we will have to look closely to those both aspects from institutional point of view and from uh, the, uh, the, the unions of engineers, for instance, and the accreditation agencies and 
local authorities. So you think that, so you when, think there that when there is a, 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 a common a, European engineering degree, that it will be uh, more attractive internationally? I think, I hope, I hope. Uh, there's this uh, North American US accreditation label, which calls ABET, and uh, it is widely, widely used among, around the world. And I would like to have those uh, a European engineer degree or a label like uh, US. And we have the INEAHI uh, organization among uh, our members as partner member of the Allies Alliance in order to have this European engineer, European educated engineer. And I think this kind of engineer have specificities in terms mm -hmm. of mm -hmm. science, in terms of connection with the, with the society. And uh, this is really a European specificity that we should be proud of. Well, I find it really interesting. Alone the, the public debate about the development of this degree is um, certainly modernizing the way of thinking of um, how engineers are working. Um, maybe ask, like, ask last question, um, Thibault. Um, uh, what special skills did you have to learn now for this new um, position as a, as, a, as a work package leader, as a coordinator for the Alliance? Uh, well, you know, I'm, I'm not sure that project management and delivery related to European universities or work package or... or, or so on require new skills. Uh, it's rather a combination of skills skills that we already have within our institution, within our teams, like uh, budget and financial monitoring, uh, pedagogical engineering, quality instruments. So it means different skills, so different people in different departments and having them in the right tempo. So that is, that is challenging. Knowing uh, how to mobilize colleagues, targeting their interests, and having their added value uh, as much relevant as possible. So. I would say, fortunately, uh, European universities are finding a really positive eco within our teams and our institution. We have plenty, plenty of enthusiasm, but colleagues' time, mm, it's a more delicate subject. <laughs> Thibault, thank you so much. I'm so happy only to think about that I'm speaking with Paris. This is already gratifying, I must say. Um, well, let's come back <laughs> to a uh, not so far city from Berlin, which is Potsdam. And so we are joining, uh, we're joined by our, by our fourth participant in the first part of the panel is Nadine Shovakar. Uh, she is um, a um, project um, coordinator um, for EDUC, um, the alliance for the digital European University, where the exact name is, it's a, it's a word game. University as a city, exactly, it's very nice. <laughs> and um, Nadine, you, uh, you're coming from, from um, the Austrian University um, Conference, uh, that is like the, the as Association of um, Austrian Universities, and from there then you joined in Potsdam um, the European University Alliance. So you made a step from Austria to Berlin, to Potsdam to be precise. Um, what, what were the first news that you, that you noticed when you arrived? Right. Work-wise. Work-wise. Mm. <laughs> I was going into how the food has changed, but yes, <laughs> I'll concentrate on the work. Um, welcome from my side also. Um, as Tina was saying, Nadine, um, I work for, uh, for EDUC, the European Digital University. What was uh, new here? Of course, I mean, the biggest change, I would say, from a rector's conference is that now I work at one university. I mean, as in a, a, a European project, but it's a different kind of institution than a rector's conference. That was probably the first um, impression. Yeah, I'd, I'd say that. Um, we, I was welcomed by a very, um, if you might say French, uh, we had a coffee first and some croissants <laughs> by the vice president, um, Professor Schweigert, who is also sort of, we are also coordinating uh, this uh, alliance. So Professor Schweigert is the, the leader in that sense. And we had a nice uh, breakfast with the head of the international office, my fellow project manager, Katja, Katja Jung. And I think um, his uh, strategic advisor was also there. So this was my very first impression. And then, of course, the beautiful campus of the University of Potsdam. So, but these are all like my feelings. So it was a very nice start, I have to say. 
<laughs> well, I, <laughs> I'm calling from here, from the suburb of Potsdam, which is Berlin, um, to hear what's going on uh, in the capital of Brandenburg. Um, <laughs> well, we have been talking about your job and, and your challenges, uh, your, your task that you have now as a, as a project manager of, um, of EDUC. Um, the one keyword that has, uh, has come up was change management. So um, apparently what you're doing is um, communicating and project planning in order to change something. How would you describe this kind of work, and, work. Uh, in, and, particular uh, in particular for the Alliance? For the alliance. Yeah, I mean, first of all, you know, nobody likes change in general. And this is a very big change management uh, project, or actually it's a project that's supposed to be a structure later. So we have like different like lines of our development. One is to bring it from project to structure. Um, the other one is to like poke for institutional change, as I would call it. So we are trying to find allies within all of our six institutions. Um, so basically um, we are trying to reach out and connect to as many people as possible. And as I was saying, nobody likes change, this is true. However, and luckily the uh, European Universities Initiative, I found at the University of Potsdam and also our partners, generally it has a very positive notion and positive feeling. So people are generally have uh, willing to be part. Then of course the, the next like personal um, sort of feeling that I got is that everybody likes change when it's just like how you were joking before. Yeah, let's do that in European level, which means let's take my way and make it European. <laughs> so the real change is to profoundly talk. And that's also the part that takes time to actually get to know each other and to see processes and to learn from each other and then to possibly and in an, also in an efficient way uh, change processes or align processes or like see what you can do together. So we are working on all different, um, as Katrin was also saying, on different levels within the university. Um, we are going from the Senate, the president's office. We are going to meet the students. We had a Facebook event to in engage with them. We are also collaborating with staff on very different levels, the research office, like all sorts of different um, actors within the university where, of course, as change agents, we're always trying to reach the ones who are willing like the ones who are already interested and they help us because alone you can't do anything and you don't want to also because it has to become a project of the university that the people want, you know? <laughs> and like, you can't come top down and say, I want to change this or that. It has to come from within the university, which is of course, always a balance of top down. You come with ideas, you discuss with people, certain things will come from bottom up. Um, as an example, maybe to not just talk in general terms, we've just um, on Monday, yesterday launched a call for research seminars or workshops, which means that within the Alliance, we have seven research topics and we are trying to find doctoral candidates and researchers to join and see what project they can develop within EDUC. These are very broad topics like health or European studies. So we are on the one hand within the Alliance, sort of in a top down, but very broad way, deciding on these um, uh, research topics, of course, keeping the university strategies in mind so it doesn't come from nowhere. But then on the other hand, we uh, send out a call to every researcher at the university to try reach everybody and give everybody the possibility to partake if they want to. Then at the same time, of course, like talking of the change agents or those who are motivated, we are also talking individually to uh, those professors who are already very pro-Europe and very much like always in international projects. So we have always have sort of a two-prone approach to trying to include everybody and of course, trying to identify people who are especially eager to, to contribute to this idea. So this is just one example of, of mm. how we are mm. trying to bring about the change. One, one word that always came up um, also with the other participants of our panel um, is the term challenge-based. Apparently, the European uh, Commission has written it into the program, um, but um, maybe it would be interesting to know more what this actually means. Yeah, we are like, it's again about in the sense about institutional change that we are trying to come from a few a few, but a few in each institution, professors who already work like that, who are trying to get challenges from the uh, society as such, could be from companies, could be from NGOs, could be like uh, from the wider public into the universities and like work with them in their seminars or courses or whatever it is to make it a little more systemic and have like, yeah, and include these uh, challenges into the 
into our uh, sort of learning activities. I think the other thing that is typical for the European universities or special about it is that the challenge-based approach is combined with an international approach. So we have, for example, these courses, uh, which are now a lot of online courses or were like online or later blended that, for example, University of Potsdam would have a course with the University of Rennes and the students would then also meet for one week and work on a project, which ideally is a challenge. So it does combine these elements to work on concrete challenges which come from society and to also work on them internationally. So I think that is what is basically the, the idea of the European Alliance is sort of what makes it special, but it doesn't mean that this doesn't exist yet. And this is, again, we are trying to connect and strengthen those people who already work like that. Because at each of our member universities, there are already people who do sort of not what we do, but <laughs> what is being fostered by the European alliances. So it's nothing new. I think it's a, a streamlining or an empowering process for people who work that way. It's well, there's, there's, there's a new community of coordinators, work, um, work package leaders, and um, project officers only uh, working for uh, and trying to uh, develop these European university alliances. So it's a, it's a total new group of people working in a certain spirit and with a certain, well, professionality, uh, professional, professionalism, yes, with a, with a certain professionalism. So um, if you reflect up upon your own, your own profession, would you say that, that this, is, this is a special kind of work that you're doing now, that, 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 that can be that defined can be as a work, uh, as a job description? Mm, in my uh, personal experience, what is special is the diversity, um, as also Katrin was saying before, that you're going into so many different uh, fields. Um, and of course, and that I, again, personally, I'm a little torn whether I like it or I don't like it, the speed that comes mainly from the European Commission, like the kind of um, sort of TGV train that we're on. <laughs> <laughs> to try to bring about change. <laughs> so these are the, I think that um, I used to work for a rector's conference and there are sometimes similar processes. Now you would try to the, where 20 or are 22 Austrian universities and you're trying to bring about change or, or you know, like have, have a new topic, whatever, like, I don't know, um, uh, the open publishing, like the, um, uh, you know, that you, you publish your, and we would come up with a, a certain like framework or help the universities to do it in a streamlined way uh, within Austria. But this project would go on or take maybe half a year or a year <laughs> to, you know, come to the working paper, come to processes and, and work on this. So now we are like on a three year project and we are trying to see deliverables and trying to see concrete actions for very big topics and for very big so this is also a specific specificity <laughs> i don't know something special about the european universities that's which is also good because the good thing is you might say the longer you talk about it maybe nothing happens and if you do it quickly at least something happens <laughs> i don't know this is, but this is for, for sure something i feel is, is is special about the european alliances we would um close this part of the of the debate um for a moment um, and have a little intermission of two minutes and come back and talk with our man from Brussels. So thank you so far for now.